Hey, hey, everybody. It's the Review Revolution back at you again. And now we're going to take a look at the last, or we're going to wrap up with the last of the NECA Real Toys Jonah Hex movie figures. And today it is Quentin Turnbull. Uh, Turnbull being the, from what I understand, the most reoccurring villain from the Jonah Hex line, or story. Uh, I don't think Hex necessarily has a uh, um, arch villain per se, uh, but uh, Turnbull apparently was the most reoccurring villain, and so he was the one that uh, that they've used here in this first movie. Hopefully there'll, there'll be more, but we'll talk about that. Um... Here we see, uh, on, on the packaging, we see Turnbull in the pack. And then in the foreground, we've got the card with the profile of Hex, kind of in a shadowy sort of, uh, of coloring, which I actually like. It, it really gives the impression that Hex is looking at uh, Quentin, kind of in the background, maybe hiding behind something. I, I like the way that looks, particularly with the two of them. Didn't really work with Hex in the pack. Didn't really work with uh, with uh, Leela on there, but uh, but it looks actually very cool when you see uh, when you see Turnbull and actually in the box with Hex kind of standing in the foreground. That's actually really cool. Um, sneak peek of the motion comic. Again, I can go over that a little bit more here about when we talk about the movie. But uh, the other figures, as I mentioned, there is Hex. Very good likeness of uh, Josh Brolin. But as I mentioned with uh, Leela or Lila, whichever you prefer. And possibly with Turnbull, I think that these two uh, may have been the ones that they did not get the uh, permission or the, the rights to do their likenesses, which is another reason why on the back of the pack we only get the portrait of Josh Brolin. Uh, if they had gotten Megan Fox and, uh, and uh, John Malkovich, we probably would have seen their specific uh, pictures here with their write-up on the back. Instead, we get a little bit more about the motion comic, and the write-ups are actually on the side. For Quentin Turnbull, his burning eyes are windows into the madness and cruelty within. Losing his beloved son in the flames of civil war sparked a new fire within him, a hatred of Jonah Hex, transforming Turnbull into a megalomaniac bent on wreaking terror in the newly reunited United States. Still tormented by the fall of the Confederacy, he plots a vengeful attack on the citizenry in hopes of igniting a rebellion. The only thing standing in his way? Jonah Hex. Hey, I did that pretty good. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of a look at, uh, at the box, at the pack. Seen it a few times already. Let's take a moment, let's pop them open, get a look at the figure, and have some fun. So, be right back. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking around. We've got Turnbull out of his box, and... Yes, I think it is fair to say that uh, Josh Brolin, being the title character in the movie, is the only one that uh, actually whose likeness uh, was licensed for use by NECA. Uh, because as, as close as this comes to being the uh, Turnbull character, I don't really see much of John Malkovich in there. I'm sure if you look closely enough, you may see some parts... But you certainly have to be looking, and even then, it's going to be kind of iffy. Which is disappointing, because the movie actually was really good. The actors delivered a solid performance, each and every one of them. If you're a fan of any of these actors, their performances are, are, are perfect for how each of them, you know, from, from what you expect from them. Absolutely perfect. Great, great acting. Um, the costume that Turnbull comes in, is actually really nice. Uh, I love that uh, he has kind of this very um, uh, upper class style. The the he's got the long coat, though it does have kind of a dark dry brush over it, which makes it look a little more worn and a little less pristine. Also, in the jacket underneath, it's kind of got a black jacket with some brown dry brush, again showing that. He may not be a gentle man, a man of wealth, but certainly a man of education, and that makes him dangerous. So, the way the costume is, was put together, the way the character design is set, it's actually really nice. He's got the red vest and the black uh, ascot. There's a slight drop of paint underneath, but, you know, uh, uh, keeping clean paint on NECA 
not always their top priority. Uh, underneath, he has the pinstripe pants and the leather boots, which have kind of the brown, dusty dirt, again showing that he is a man of action. And <laughs> not, they're not very nice actions, I might say. Uh, the head, of course, the hair has the very nice highlights in it. Uh, the mustache, talking about the paint, it has a very, very light brown, which almost fades into the into the skin tone. And, I don't know, maybe that helps uh, uh, the, the look to the movie, but it is a little kind of hard to see, a little hard to make out sometimes, unless you know, you're looking at it in person. Uh, the head does turn. And it is on a slight ball. Not much, but it is on one. Uh, the right arm is on a hinge. The left is on a hinge, but it also comes out ever so slightly. Uh, both elbows go up and down and twist. The left hand does twist, uh, but the right one actually does also move back and forth. That's on a hinge as well. So kind of an interesting articulation for him there. Like with most NECA figures, there is a twist at the waist. But surprisingly enough, just like with Leela, there is a crunch at his mid-torso. So a little surprising. Uh, nothing in the thighs, nothing in the knees, except to say that the boots do come out so high, or come up so high, that they twist... So that there is some movement in there, it's just not like an actual knee articulation. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out, because it's giving me some trouble, is that one foot has the heel slightly off the ground. So, it takes a little... It takes a little work... A little work. <laughs> to get him back into place. Come on now. This is another reason. I mentioned this with Hex. Hex does not have this problem at all. He stands very flat-footed. Uh, but, there we go. But, um... If these figures that come with stands, maybe some type of Western diorama, that actually went really cool and could have certainly saved on that problem. Uh, I guess to cause myself some other problems, um, Turnbull does come with his revolver, which has a lot of nice detail in it, particularly around the uh, the handle and the trigger. It's actually very nice. Fits into his holster as such. Uh, there is a, uh, there is a, uh, uh, well, no, I'll, I'll wait. He does come with his hat, which when he wears it, it looks actually pretty nice. Even more of a Quentin Turnbull kind of appearance, just like with, uh, with Hex. It certainly just adds to the character. But to spoil just a couple of things, Turnbull does actually lead a train robbery as any good Western should have. So he comes with the mask that he wears. And he also comes with the cane with kind of the vulture or bird handle. It's actually very nice, no warping. Kudos to NECA for, uh, for giving us the accessory and keeping it so nicely done. So overall, the movie, uh, it it seems a lot like the like a like a sci-fi original, but um, it, it it in no way has anything to do with the way the actors performed. They do a great job. Um, the director, how the movie was made, I think that's where the movie suffers the most. But if you can kind of push that aside, if you're looking for just a good you know popcorn movie to go see one evening with some friends certainly recommend it but uh, this is the review revolution taking a look at the neko real toys jonah hex quentin turnbull rate comment subscribe join the revolution and we'll see you soon bye bye